This story begins at night. Why at night? Because it was a night job. Obviously, only those who were busy during the day worked at night, the students. However, Hobang lied to the driver, claiming he was 20. It was still a very young age for such hard work. The driver couldn't lift the box. What, were they putting stones in there? Hobang realized he should help. He easily lifted all the boxes at once, while the adult man couldn't even handle one. The driver's jaw nearly dropped. Yet Hobang insisted that he was perfectly fine. Meanwhile, the work was already finished, quite quickly, thanks to the teenager. He could breathe a sigh of relief that they believed him, and returned back to the store. Meanwhile, dawn was breaking. The boss was outraged that they asked Hobang about his age. But the teenager swore he lied and they believed him. He understood that he would have big problems if he got caught. The boss knew this. He hired the boy due to his circumstances, but still worried. Suddenly, he noticed that Hobang had previously worn a different school uniform. He completely forgot to mention that he was already in high school now. Meanwhile, the scene shifted to public transport. Behind Hobang stood two girls discussing the boy's uniform. They were seeing it for the first time. Hobang heard everything. The girls were curious why he was taking the subway. Didn't every one of those students have a personal driver? Or had the school started accepting kids from regular families? Regular families? What did regular even mean? Someone like them would never understand. Tuition at Seal High School cost 10 million one per semester. Because of this, it was often called the Che Bol High School, the largest corporations in Korea owned by one family, and most students were children of those families. So how could a boy like Ho Bang get into such a school? On the way to school, a group of boys from another institution was smoking. They wanted to skip classes to go to a computer club, but no one had money for that. Suddenly, their leader saw something interesting, that ridiculous school uniform. He recognized a student from CL High School. Another added that it was a school for rich kids. The leader didn't care anymore. He focused all his attention on the rich. It was already clear where this was going. The group of cool boys was in shock. They no longer believed that Ho Bang was from Seattle. Where was his money? Why was he bringing his own food? But it turned out he was just a scholarship student. Ho Bang said he was late for class, so he asked for his backpack back. The leader didn't get the money he wanted, but he had to get something else. It seemed to him that Ho Bang was too polite. The poor student found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. They returned his backpack, albeit a bit roughly, but that wasn't all because the bullies still hadn't had their fun. Hobang immediately got punched in the stomach, after which he was hit again. The leader was annoyed that Hobang seemed to think he was special just because he was from Seattle. But in reality, it was clear that the bully was just angry at the whole world. Hobang understood what was going on too. He probably should have pretended to be scared. Seal High School selected scholarship students from poor families every year. Hobang's stomach growled. He pulled out his crumpled snack from his wrinkled backpack. This year, Hobang was one of those lucky ones who received a scholarship. Meanwhile, the scene shifted to Seal School itself. He arrived there, his clothes were in terrible condition. But Hobang himself wasn't beaten or scratched, just a bit dirty. The school itself, he didn't think there was anything special about it. Not in the school, but in the students. One student got out of a car, the driver opened the door for him, bowed, and called him Young Master. Young Master? Another student was addressed as Miss. Miss? Hobang had never seen such cars. Was this some kind of auto show? Everyone looked at him strangely. He felt those gazes on him. It was a bit awkward. Now he began to doubt whether he could attend such a school. But there was no turning back. Maybe he should have washed his clothes first. Hobang immediately made it clear who among them was the scholarship student. The sideways glances spoke for themselves. But this topic quickly shifted to another. They were discussing some girl who was going to attend this school. The parents of their wealthy children had already instructed them to befriend this person. Everyone was discussing it, but no one mentioned names. Hobang, of course, was not in the loop. Was she some kind of celebrity? And at that moment, she walked in. All eyes were now on her, not on Hobang's dirty clothes. It was the younger sister of the president of Hyesung Group, Kang Gai. Among all the students who got in, she was from a real chable that ranked among the top three Korean conglomerates. Hobang didn't understand what any of this meant. He wanted to find a restroom. His lunch was calling him back. Everyone was making such a fuss over her. Was she a princess? In any case, her appearance screamed wealth. To be honest, Hobang was incredibly envious. She didn't have to worry about money like he did. Kang Gay noticed his gaze on her and responded in kind. Suddenly, Gay's expression changed sharply. 
Hobang was already scared. He had had enough of confusing situations for one day. She was approaching him, and Hobang ran away, thinking she was curious about how someone like him was here. It seemed Guy was ready to speak. Everyone was shocked. Was this loser acquainted with someone like her? Hobang wished he could sink into the ground. He didn't want so much attention on himself. Gay did end up speaking to him, but she was interrupted. They announced the start of the entrance ceremony. Everyone had to take their seats. So everyone had to line up as they were arranged. A strange bald woman came on stage. She was the school principal, Ashlyn. A quiet laugh spread through the hall. Hobang was very indifferent to all of this, but he wasn't indifferent to the fact that Gay was staring at him again. How much longer? This was starting to annoy him. She didn't notice anyone but Hobang. The rest were completely gray to her. But don't switch off. I promise this story isn't about love. It's much more interesting. Meanwhile, the entrance ceremony was coming to an end. The principal bowed and her bald head caught the spotlight. Everyone was blinded. Was she doing it on purpose? For some, it was just the perfect moment. Hobang vanished, as if he had been waiting for the right moment to escape. Everyone left the school. There were no classes that day. Gay was searching for Hobang with her eyes. But everything was gray. She saw no one. What a pity. But they would meet again, right? Just then, someone called her. She didn't think it was Hobang. The voice was familiar. A beautiful, tall, and stylish girl came to pick her up. It was her older sister. She was asking how school was, but Gay said the students were just gloomy. It wasn't very interesting to listen to, but there was something. Gay asked her to find out about one person. Honestly, this isn't a dumb love story. However, her sister also decided she liked someone. Meanwhile, the scene shifted to residential buildings, regular neighborhoods. Hobang wanted to, to sign up for a part-time job, handing out flyers. He was calling from a landline. He got accepted, so Hobang was happy. Gay was watching him from a car. Here's where it gets interesting. Two girls were strolling down the street together. Suddenly, someone in a pink costume abruptly shoved a flyer at her. Guess who was in the bear costume? Just a cutie. Exhausted, Hobang finally took off that stuffy costume. This was his second part-time job. He earned 20000 won for it, about $15. However, Hobang was satisfied with this. His singing testified to that. He was so happy that he didn't even notice he was being watched. Meanwhile, the scene shifted back to school. A week had passed since Hobang started studying there, and no one had spoken to him. Was he a recluse, or were they just ignoring him? Overall, he was fine with this. Hobang was tired from night shifts and handing out flyers. He hoped he could continue studying peacefully at this school so he would have the chance to sleep between classes during lunch to work at night. But his plans were just ruined. Two classmates came over. In a week, they hadn't even remembered his name, Hobang or Obang. They wanted to find out about the scholarship that was being paid to him. They learned that the conditions for the scholarship were basic means for survival. Their tiny brains managed to analyze that this meant the state was paying Hobang, and he went to school for free and received everything for free. Was he really a beggar? They decided that his scholarship was funded by the payments of others. Hobang realized this was a transition from ignorance to bullying, but he decided not to stay silent and asked what they meant. A classmate handed him 50,000 won and said to buy some bread. After all, Hobang studied for free, but he had to pay for food. The classmate said he wasn't that bad and laughed, allowing him to keep the change. The events shifted to the store. Hobang held the bread in his hands. Now this place resembled a school for the wealthy, but he was even glad for such an errand. Isn't it wonderful? He even had 47,001 left. Suddenly he was called. It was her gay. They hadn't seen each other all week. But how did she know his name then? And what about the bread in his hands? Meanwhile, the two boys were discussing their actions with Hobang. For some reason, they found it amusing to send a classmate for bread. He compared Hobang to a dog wagging its tail when they said he could keep the change. Gay overheard all of this, and then she abruptly entered the classroom. Everyone, as always, stared at her. The two boys could hardly wait to think of something else very funny. But their plans fell through, if only they could see their faces. Gay took the bread from Hobang and asked whom it should be given to. Everyone was silent but looked at the culprits, which gave them away. Gay approached them. And out of fear, fear, they even began to stutter. She ignored all their questions and asked if the blonde girl had ordered it. Our little girl began to sweat down her face. Gay wanted to find out if they had called Hobang a beggar. The boys regretted this a million times. Gay asked if they would give her money too, if they had so much. The blonde was so scared that she started apologizing. She looked down. 
just as Gay thought, the coward was frightened, after which she silently left. But Hobang was not satisfied with all this. The atmosphere became completely different. He decided it would be strange if he kept the money for himself. So even though he didn't want to at all, he, with trembling hands, he returned the change. The boys accepted it. Meanwhile, the events shifted to that street. Hobang stood in a pink bear costume, counting that by handing out flyers for two hours, he earned 20,001. It was impossible not to cry over this, especially when he was also being beaten. 7,001, his money. Suddenly, someone yelled at the hooligans. It was gay. She defended the bear because there was a living person inside. Hobang couldn't believe such a coincidence. Probably just a coincidence. But when Gay called him by name, earlier she had learned everything about Hobang. The city, the house, the rent. Even that his parents had died when he was a child and he lived with his grandmother. Recently she had fainted while collecting paper for recycling and had been in the hospital. Gay roughly calculated that one night's work was not enough to cover all expenses. And that's probably why Hobang wore that silly costume. But what was she doing? Hobang was furious. How did she find out all this? Gay ignored this question and asked if he needed money. Hobang shouted, how could she behave like this? Gay ignored that too, offering to eat Titiakbaki with her for 100,001. Why are you looking like that? Would you resist such an amount? Hobang didn't understand what was wrong with Gay, but the rich have their quirks. Gay noticed that look on her. She said everything was written on Hobang's face. He thought she was strange. But she liked his honesty. Gay offered to take something else if he didn't like it. Hobang pretended it wasn't about that, but he was already afraid that Gay knew everything about him. Suddenly, a terrible thought crossed his mind. It couldn't be. She fell in love with a handsome guy like Hobang. Gay addressed him by his full name. She was definitely confessing her love. She asked if she could ask Hobang for a favor. What kind of favor? Gay promised to pay, again. Could he resist? He needed the money very badly, not just for himself, but for his grandmother. Meanwhile, it was already getting dark. Gay still hadn't told him about the favor, and it was time for Ho Bang to go. She kept the intrigue, but said just a little longer. And at that moment, it happened. A man came to the grandmother's place where they were eating. She said she would prepare everything for the next week. But the man didn't like that. He started yelling and throwing chairs. It turned out that the grandmother owed money at a high interest rate, but couldn't pay it back. And the man didn't care. He was one of those who came to debtors and crippled them. Hobang began to guess what kind of favor Gay was talking about, and he understood everything correctly. She would pay, and Hobang had to get rid of that man. It seemed there was no sense in this, but I assure you, you will understand everything ahead. Hobang was furious. And how was Gay different from those classmates? Pretending to be nice all day just to ask for something like that? She was just a hypocrite who solved everything with money. Gay ignored everything and raised the stakes to one million one. Well, what are you judging again? That's $750. Hobang arrived just in time. The grandmother was in danger. A brief conversation passed between the man and the student, revealing that this grandmother was not related to Hobang, and therefore the collector didn't understand what was required of him. To be honest, he didn't know the answer to that question either as he didn't have time to think before his body reacted on its own. One million one. The man was not one to solve problems without brute force, so Hobang immediately received a slap. Little brat, didn't he see that adults were working here? But the man was very mistaken if he thought it would be that easy to get rid of Hobang. He couldn't believe his eyes. There wasn't even a scratch on the boy. He asked the man to leave the grandmother alone. The man could no longer hold back. So he continued to solve problems the way he knew how, with his fists. This time, Hobang took a beating, several times. Hobang didn't even dodge. Yeah, Gay was even disappointed for a moment. Well, finally, this time, Hobang had to understand for sure. He lay there powerless. The grandmother was worried about him. She wanted to go to Hobang, but the man grabbed her by the neck like a cat and then threw her away like trash. The man was now even angrier at her because he thought she had brought Hobang. Suddenly, Hobang got up again. He didn't have a single scratch on him. He said the man was an adult and should behave accordingly. That was the last straw. It seemed Hobang really wanted to go to the other world. He hit the student in the stomach with all his might if he wanted the man to behave like an adult. Then he had to get up. Now Hobang would give him a few personal lessons. One million. The man didn't hear. Hobang shouted louder about one million one. The student knew exactly which strings to pull. Even Gay became curious. 
Hobang broke into a self-satisfied smile. One million won, money solved everything. However, for some reason, this had the opposite effect. The man lunged at him with his fists again. Hobang just stood there waiting for another punch from this gentleman. Gay expected that the classmate would show this scoundrel. But no, this idiot got hit again. She regretted a million times that she got involved with such a fool. Hobang couldn't even stand up for himself properly. The man blamed the student for provoking him. Truly a very adult position. But the worst part was that he blamed the grandmother for bringing this idiot. Hoban got up again. He asked the man to finally stop. However, he couldn't understand why the man, having beaten this teenager well, why did he get up every time? Hoban told the scoundrel that he had already poured out all his anger so he could leave the grandmother alone. But all his pleas were in vain. Such stupidity was starting to irritate Hobang, but it seemed the man had found a new breath. He began to feel insecure that he couldn't beat an ordinary teenager, so he kept hitting Hobang without stopping. Well, this time there had to be a result. He had to knock Hobang out. After all, he was just a child. But the student got up again. It seemed he didn't care at all. The man couldn't just leave it like that. He had fought with so many people, thugs and tough guys, but he couldn't handle a child. Even Gay didn't understand anything. She couldn't comprehend why Hobang allowed himself to be beaten like this. The man decided that the student was some kind of lunatic because he wasn't getting hurt at all, yet he let himself be hit like this. Suddenly, an old lady clung to the man's leg, pleading for him to stop, as this was just a child. But this only irritated him more. He had no conscience at all, so he was about to hit the old lady too. But something went wrong. He didn't even understand what had happened. Before he could blink, he was already thrown back several meters. Everyone was shocked, even gay. The man landed painfully on his back. He simply couldn't believe it. A child had beaten him? Hobang approached to ask if the uncle was okay. But it seemed the man was already afraid of him because he suddenly got up, cold sweat dripping down his face. Hobang wanted to assure him, he should him, assure him that he hadn't been hurt badly, but the former tough guy was backing away. The student couldn't understand why. The man ordered the old lady to prepare money for the next time. His voice no longer sounded so confident, he was even stuttering. And he threatened Hobang with death if they ever crossed paths again. Of course, they would never meet again because the man was afraid of the encounter himself. Hobang could finally breathe easy. He had completed the task. And Gay herself told him this, suddenly appearing as if out of nowhere. Hobang immediately reminded her about the million one. Gay just confirmed once more that he really loved money. But that wasn't right. Wasn't he even curious about where he had gone? Gay called him to come with her, and on the way, she would explain everything. But Hobang had no more time. He needed money, and that was it. Gay knew this about his job in the store from 11 to 6. She told him to quit. It was illegal work. Hobang replied that it was legal with the guardian's permission. But Gay knew for sure that the old lady hadn't given permission for such work. That didn't even need to be checked. So she threatened to tell if he didn't go with her. Who had he gotten involved with? Gay changed her mind and decided to tell him this, whether he went with her or not, since the store manager hadn't even paid Hobang the minimum wage. Little Ginger Monster. Meanwhile, it had already gotten dark. They were sitting in a cafe where Gay confessed that she had done this a long time ago, so Hobang didn't need to come to work anymore. He was just furious he needed a job. But even if Hobang had stayed at work, he still wouldn't have earned as much money as he needed. Didn't he understand that? Gay said not to worry, as she would give him money. But what was the catch? Why would Gay do this? At the entrance ceremony, she had acted strangely, and now her orders were the same. They had just met. Did she learn something else about him, and Hobang wanted to know everything? Gay timidly said he didn't need to hide this from her. But what did she mean? Gay said that Hobang was different from others, and knew it himself. But the boy didn't understand anything at all. Gay said that Hobang was like her, and had a superpower. What the hell? They sat in silence for a while. Then Hobang decided to speak. He asked if Gay had hit her head as a child. By the way, about her childhood. Her mother had told her back then that when the time came, Gay would take her mother's eyes. The girl hadn't understood this at the time, but her mother said it had been the same for her once. She had gotten her eyes from her father, and now her mother was giving them to her daughter. It was natural. This was what parents passed on to their children, and the mother promised to try to pass it on as late as possible. After all, the world she saw with those eyes wasn't so beautiful. Gay suddenly asked, what exactly had her mother seen? She wanted to know the difference between what her mother saw 
in what she did. The specifics. Finally, something interesting was starting. Gay said that her eyes saw special people, like Ho Bang. Special people had abilities beyond human limits. For example, the ability to throw a person high into the air. And her ability was to see the color of those like Ho Bang. In her eyes, everything except that was gray. And she noticed that Ho Bang wasn't just strong. He had been beaten, but there wasn't a scratch on him. She was exaggerating. The teenager considered himself just a bit stronger than others. And Gay didn't understand why Ho Bang let himself be beaten, as he had been in control from the very beginning. The answer was very simple and naive. Ho Bang was worried that the person could get hurt, so he decided to put himself in harm's way. It was better than someone else getting hurt. Everything would be fine with Ho Bang anyway. Gay said she had been looking for someone like him for a long time, and finding someone with enough self-control was much harder than just finding someone strong. She asked about Ho Bang's parents. The teenager didn't understand anything. Who was this story about Gay's mom for then? She had to explain again. She asked from whom Ho Bang had inherited this ability. You won't believe it. He still didn't get it. Gay was in shock for two reasons. First, could Ho Bang really be that stupid? Second, could he have inherited this ability without even knowing it? After all, he should have inherited his ability from his parents. Suddenly, many memories came before Ho Bang's eyes, but they weren't the kind he wanted to share. So Ho Bang simply stood up and left. His mood was completely ruined. He said he had had enough of this madness. Gay didn't like this. They hadn't finished yet. But Ho Bang had nothing more to say. He asked for the money tomorrow. She was rich. Gay was in shock. Was that just a condemnation directed at her? Ho Bang was in a hurry because he lost his job because of someone and advised Gay to read fewer comics. What? It was as if he was running away from her. As he went down, Ho Bang brushed past Gay's sister. She realized that the conversation had gone poorly, so she turned back to her sister. Gay was upset because they hadn't even gotten to the heart of the matter. The sister didn't believe that Ho Bang hadn't guessed about his superpower, knowing he could launch a person into the air. Something was off here, something was wrong with him. But still, the question remained, what was wrong with Gay? Did people always believe her right away? Whether Ho Bang acknowledged his strength or not, he still remained superhuman. The sister reminded her that Gay's ability wasn't just about what she saw. Had she forgotten what information they had found about Ho Bang? Meanwhile, the boy stood by his workplace. He lowered his head in guilt and asked to come back. But the boss didn't want to hear any apologies, as he would simply be fined. Ho Bang's entry into the store was forever closed from now on. But that still wasn't all. The teenager asked to return everything he had earned this month. The boss was simply furious at such audacity. But he still returned those coins to Ho Bang, as he knew how much he needed the money. I shouldn't say this, but in reality, the teenager always knew that his body was different from others. But if what Gay said was true, then he most likely inherited it from his mother. She wasn't present, but still made him recall those memories once more. It reminded Ho Bang of that painful night. The apartment building caught fire. Some managed to escape. But one man tried to walk straight into the flames, even though they were stopping him. He shouted the names of the boy and his beloved. It was Ho Bang's father. Meanwhile, more apartments were catching fire. The firefighters were about to leave as they risked burning themselves. Suddenly, one partner heard a voice. He definitely hadn't imagined it. And so the firefighter ran straight into the flames. In doing so, he saved a little child. But that wasn't the end of the story because the firefighter heard another woman's voice. Someone was still inside. That child turned out to be Ho Bang and he was pulled out completely intact, not even harmed. And it was from that day that everything began. Ho Bang's father was beside him. He calmly waited for his son to wake up. But why then was he not with his wife? Ho Bang, of course, wanted to know what had happened and why he was lying there. However, dad didn't know how to respond. He said he would do it later, but the son understood everything himself. He asked where mom was. For a second, everything fell silent. The whole world hushed and then a tear rolled down the father's cheek. Ho Bang's heart raced wildly. He suddenly felt very scared. The father asked the little child what he should do now, tears flowing like a river. Now the son felt even more frightened. The events shifted to a service room. You know, it was such a place where only the patient monitor could be heard. The only proof that the patient was still alive. Because right now, it was just a wrapped mummy, impossible to recognize as a person. That was Ho Bang's mother. Her whole body was covered in burns. The sight was too horrifying for the little boy, as he didn't even recognize his mother there. 
Hobang's body began to retreat on its own. He pressed against his father. Dad said that the mother had been searching for her son all this time. This meant that Hobang couldn't leave. In his mind, he understood that it was his mother in front of him, but his eyes saw something else. The poor boy couldn't handle it, so he screamed very loudly. After which, he ran out of the room, still shouting. Hobang was just a child and completely didn't understand what he was doing. He only knew that this woman was not his mother. Hobang didn't want to hurt his parents, but he did. Then he should have bikied his mother by the hand, and the adult Hobang understood that. Wait, a superhuman? Hobang didn't even notice how he crumpled the coins in his hand. He didn't even put in any special effort. He wasn't a superhuman. He was just trash. The scene shifted to the hospital. Hobang arrived, and there was undisguised surprise on his face. The administrator told him that all the bills had already been paid. It was all very strange, but Hobang had a hunch about what was going on. He decided to visit his grandmother, as always. And there, his suspicions were confirmed. After all, he wasn't the only one visiting his grandmother this time. Gay was with him. Should I even mention that Hobang was furious? What right did she have to barge into his family like that? And to have the audacity to pretend that nothing had happened? They stepped outside to talk. Hobang had many questions for Gay. Her behavior was already frightening. She knew too much about him. Hobang confessed that he was a superhuman, but that had nothing to do with Gay. Suddenly, she began to tell him that Grandma was very proud of her grandson, that he got into a prestigious school on a scholarship and had never upset her in his childhood. Gay even felt a bit jealous. Grandma talked about Hobang all the time, but he was jealous of his classmate in every other way. Suddenly, Gay said that her parents were killed. How could he not have heard about the assassination of President Hisan? It was a big deal where 19 people were killed, but it remained unsolved. No one was caught. On the day Gay's parents were killed, the little girl was there and saw everything with her own eyes. What could be worse? And that man, suddenly the mother stopped twitching. Silence fell in the room. And then her eyes returned to their normal color. But Gay's eyes, that man was the first one little Gay saw with those eyes, a superhuman. That day, Gay's world changed completely. And she clearly understood that superhumans and her abilities were involved. So this situation could happen again. That's why she needed someone like Ho Bang, someone with equal powers. Of course, he didn't really want to get involved in something that involved the deaths of other people. But Gay knew how to persuade him. She told him about a specialized hospital with care for the elderly that was in their company. Ho Bang didn't have to worry about money. Gay promised to take care of everything. And he no longer needed a side job because she promised that Ho Bang wouldn't need anything else. Gay said she wasn't pressuring him, but in her opinion, that was enough to agree. For a moment, everyone fell silent. Gay awaited Hobang's response, but instead, he simply turned around and left. She was in shock. Why was he silent? Suddenly, Hobang agreed, but on the condition that Gay would take care of his grandmother, as she promised. To be honest, she was shocked that it worked. Her sister had told her that Hobang needed only one thing, money. She advised Gay to just tell the guy that she would give him a lot of money. But did her sister really think that would be enough? Gay had never needed money, so she didn't even realize how powerful a lever that was. Now she could breathe a sigh of relief. She had succeeded. Meanwhile, a new day arrived. The scene shifted to a sports center. There, Gay's sister was waiting for a meeting. She was with a bewildered Ho Bang. Gay had told him to come to the sports club, but hadn't explained why. Her sister wanted to check something, since they would have to work together. But why did she point to the exercise machine? The confusion was written all over Hobang's face. Her sister wanted to test how strong he really was. All Hobang had to do was lift that thing. However, first he wanted to know where Gay was. It turned out she had business to attend to. Suddenly, her sister understood something and decided to voice her brilliant thought that Hobang missed his friend. Meanwhile, the scene shifted to a new building, specifically to an apartment in that building. Gay was there with a realtor. A card day air with a realtor. It seems she wanted to buy that apartment. The realtor was very happy and suggested signing a contract, but she misunderstood Gay. She didn't want to buy that apartment. She wanted the whole building. I think your faces are as shocked as the realtor's face right now. Meanwhile, her sister was smoking and watching Hobang's abilities. Suddenly, her cigarette fell from her mouth because that idiot easily lifted the heaviest barbell with one hand. Honestly, she couldn't even believe what she was seeing. Hobang put down the barbell and decided to ask if her sister even had a name. She extended her hand to him, 
and introduced herself. Her name was Zhang Shadal. She said she was a bit different from Ho Bang, but was also a superhuman. Meanwhile, it had already gotten dark, but they were still at the sports club. Ho Bang was reading something. He named page 85, the fifth line, and Shadal quoted it word for word. Ho Bang couldn't believe it. He was holding the book, Shared Journey. He questioned her again and again, but Shadal always quoted the book correctly. It was truly impressive. That was her ability. She remembered everything she had seen at least once. Ho Bang thought it was really incredible and cool. At that moment, Gay walked in. The conversation immediately stopped with her arrival. Gay handed over a phone and a key. She noticed that Ho Bang didn't have a mobile device, so she bought him one. And without drawing attention, she mentioned the key to the house, asking him not to lose it. She justified it by saying that Ho Bang's house was far away, so she bought the house too. He listened to all of this with a serious expression. Suddenly, his expression changed sharply. What? Meanwhile, a week passed. A lot had changed drastically. As Gay promised, Grandma was moved to a better center. She worried about where Hobang got the money, but she still didn't know about the new house. And also, Hobang got a phone for the first time in his life. But that wasn't the most surprising thing. He had his own house. Outside, Gay was standing and quickly and angrily typing something. She Dao was the first to notice that Hobang had come out. Gay was furious and immediately shared her outrage that he was late by a whole minute. And one more novelty during this time, the more Hobang received, the more anxious he became. Nothing in the world came for free. Everything had a price. The scene shifted to school, almost a typical day for an almost typical student. And by the way, the quiet school life had also changed. Finally, the lesson ended. Everyone could go to lunch, but not Hobang. He was called by Guy, who was already gathering all the attention. And now Ho Bang was getting it too, even though he never asked for it. Gay came to get him to eat together right in front of everyone. Should I even mention how embarrassed Ho Bang was? And should I mention that everyone called them a couple at school? Gay got the nickname Princess, and Ho Bang was called Beggar. The scene shifted to the cafeteria. Ho Bang noticed that Gay was eating this time without rice. This phrase was just to start a conversation while everyone stared at them and made their guesses. In fact, Ho Bang wanted to clarify something. He had only been receiving all the time but had given nothing in return. However, Gay didn't understand what was wrong with that. But it seemed that something still needed to be explained to this fool. She had already told him that Ho Bang had to do something when the time came. And when the time came, the boy wouldn't have to worry because Gay would make him finish the job, even if he didn't like it. While the two were talking, someone passed by, gathering just as many looks as Gay. It was some guy with blue hair, and he was heading straight for Kang Guy. And let's just say she was not very happy about this meeting. An old acquaintance wanted to join them for lunch. The whole cafeteria suddenly filled with the noise of gossip. Hyun Su from eight, an idol from a group. It turned out he studied at the same school but didn't attend classes due to a tight schedule. Gay said she didn't care. So this Hyun Su sat down. Ho Bang had no idea who this guy was, but he didn't like all the attention. It seemed Gay spent a lot of time with Hyun Su. And the idol had heard about Ho Bang, who was called Princess and Beggar, and he agreed with that. He was sure that Kang Gay would be better suited to someone like him. But before he could say a word, Gay loudly banged her chopsticks on the table and said that she smelled something bad. It turned out that it was all about Hyun Su's perfume. It ruined Gay's appetite. So she stood up and ordered Ho Bang to follow her. They would eat somewhere else. What else could he do? The bewildered Hyun Su watched them leave. No one had ever humiliated him like that, but he accepted the rules of this game. Ho Bang noticed that Gaye's character was not sweet. She was some kind of celebrity and she treated him like that. However, she didn't understand what was wrong with saying that a person smelled. But the problem was that Gay didn't realize it was bad because if someone said that to her, she would be offended. To be honest, Gay didn't even understand why she should care at all. A heavy pause hung in the air. Then Gay turned and said that Ho Bang needed to do something. There was tension in her voice. Hyun Su watched all of this unfold. He was far enough away, so he couldn't hear what they were saying, but he was incredibly jealous, and it irritated him. Meanwhile, it had already grown dark. The scene shifted to a karaoke bar. Somewhere in one of the booths, there was quite a romantic vibe. At that moment, the door swung open. The bouncers were already on alert, wondering who dared to enter so brazenly. Dressed all in black, with a covered face, the bouncers even had to stand up to figure out who this reckless daredevil was. 
However, the conversation with these brutes was short. They didn't expect this stranger to use the same methods of conversation. His partner was even taken aback. So he didn't react in time to realize he would be the next victim. The bouncer received a knee to the chin. The boss, whom these brutes were supposed to protect, was in shock. He simply asked why a fight had to break out so quickly. It was Hyun Su, and he said the bouncers started it. It was just self-defense. By the way, they were starting to come to their senses. The boss ordered them to step outside for a moment. Hyun Su cast a sidelong glance. He looked at the girls, but his friend said they wouldn't bother them, and added that in any case, those girls wouldn't even remember anything. The friend immediately noticed that Hyun Su was in a bad mood and quickly realized it was because of a girl. Unfortunately, the brother couldn't help Hyun Su with anything. Although, there was one thing the brother could handle. Why didn't Gay irritate Ho Bang? The bouncers were waiting outside the door. Hyun Su asked who they were. It turned out that Kyung Sok had been in an accident and couldn't be there for a while, so he sent his juniors. He had sent schoolboys. Judging by their uniforms, they were from Jijon High School, a terrible place. Hyun Su asked Kyung Sok to better prepare his students, after which a pause ensued, a tense silence. Then he turned to his brother. Hyun Su asked if he could use the services of those girls. Meanwhile, someone was having tea between some man and Shadal. She wanted to sponsor this man's athlete on the condition that he would secretly train one person. And the entire gym had to be used only by his athlete and the mysterious person. In reality, Shadal wanted the gym to be exclusively for her person, but she relented. The man was outraged as such a request was already audacity. His pride wouldn't even allow it as training an ordinary person instead of an athlete. But Shadal knew what arguments to present to satisfy his pride. At first, the man resisted and pretended it was beneath him. Shadal simply waited. She knew what she was doing. The coach gulped, after which he shook Shadal's hand. Money solved everything. Meanwhile, that athlete was training in the gym. He was alone. Han jae on was called. The coach came with someone else. jae Yoon entered the gym alone. They hadn't arranged a meeting. The topic quickly shifted to Ho Bang, whom the athlete hadn't expected to see. It was quite awkward. Meanwhile, the events shifted to the day before, where Ga said that Ho Bang needed to learn boxing. She said the guy didn't know how to fight. Yeah, Ho Bang felt hurt, but he had no way to argue. After all, he usually just endured when he was hit because he didn't feel pain, until his opponent got tired. Gay explained that the people Ho Bang would deal with weren't simple. They were superhumans like him. The coach explained to Jae Eun that now he would be training with Ho Bang. It was hard to explain that he wasn't an athlete, but just an ordinary amateur who needed to be taught. For Jae Eun, it was hard to realize that the amateur would be trained by the director himself. After all, he didn't look like someone who loved to engage in sports. The director wondered where to start and asked if Ho Bang had any experience with sports, but he had no such experience. After a brief conversation, the director realized that Ho Bang had never engaged in sports at all. Jae-Yoon understood that the coach didn't know the newcomer well and suggested conducting a test on Ho Bang's level. The director got angry. The athlete shouldn't use his skills on such amateurs. However, he didn't take into account that there was no one else in the gym and Jae-Yoon needed someone to train with. I shouldn't say this, but Jae-Yoon also wanted to show the newbie who was in charge here. So they prepared for battle. Jae-Yoon promised to go easy on Ho Bang just to check his level. He added fuel to the fire by saying that many of his opponents couldn't handle it and ran away. The director then told Shidao that even he couldn't teach them anything because they just ran away. But she promised that she wouldn't withdraw her sponsorship and take the money, even if that happened. It was the fault of those who couldn't handle it, not the director. And to be honest, he hoped for that. It would be better if Jae Eun gave the newbie a few lessons. But he was still worried and asked the athlete not to kill Ho Bang. Jae Eun didn't want to scare the newbie and asked him to start first. But Ho Bang was simply in shock as he didn't know what to do. Jae was shocked once again that his opponent was so far removed from sports. Interesting, what a strange stance. Ho Bang asked if he could attack. There was a pause, after which Ho Bang's fist appeared before Jae face. However, he was indeed a good athlete and dodged the blow. Ho Bang, to be honest, didn't expect that at all. He simply fell to the floor. Jae even felt embarrassed. Ho Bang apologized, saying his body had overwhelmed him. Jae Eun was shocked that his opponent was so unskilled and wanted to find support in the director. But he understood it was now his turn. Ho Bang was ready for this. He thought so, but didn't expect to see a fist in front of his face so quickly. And of course, he didn't dodge and got hit. However, nothing happened. 
Hobang didn't even budge from his spot. Jae-Yoon's surprise was undeniable. Was he really okay? Did he actually get hit? Hobang said that the opponent did hit him, but it all happened so fast that he didn't understand anything. Jae-Yoon was simply in shock. His astonishment hadn't faded all this time. Now he felt a spark of athletic interest awaken. The director recognized that look and shouted for Jae-Yoon to stop, but the athlete was already unstoppable. And Hobang understood that his end was near. Jae-Yoon's strike was very powerful indeed. He landed several blows. Hobang's face was like a punching bag for the athlete. There was no result, so he gathered all his strength, after which he delivered the final blow. The ropes barely held Hobang. The director began yelling at that idiot Jay Un, but then he fell silent, a look of astonishment appearing on his face. For Hobang said he truly hadn't noticed the fists. He didn't even understand when the hit came. Hobang knew that athletes were on a completely different level. Compared to them, he was just a snail. But both Jay Un and the director were left speechless. How was this idiot even standing on his feet? Hobang asked if he should continue. Jay Un was already ready. The battle was getting more and more interesting. Hobang immediately charged and lunged at his opponent. His movements were quite loud compared to the opponent. But Jae Yun immediately struck back, thinking that Hobang was very clumsy on top of everything. However, the opponent didn't give up and landed another blow right away. Well, he was trying. And then another one. But Jae Yun blocked everything and counterattacked. Hobang didn't give up, and after a few missed strikes, it seemed like he actually managed to land something. And it was something incredible. Jae-Yun simply couldn't believe that this newbie could be so strong. Although the professional athlete blocked, his arms were burning mercilessly. And they didn't just hurt. Jae-Yun was trembling all over. Ho-Bang, as always, was worried for his victims. But the opponent remained silent. Suddenly, he felt that before him stood not just a simple newbie, but a strong master to be feared. Ho-Bang asked if they could continue, but the opponent dropped his hands. After which, he admitted that he had lost. Shock was clearly written on Hobang's face, so he decided to apologize, feeling he should. Jae-Yoon had never seen anyone apologize for a victory before, but it was even cute. Meanwhile, the training had already ended. It was so strange that it fell to the one who had the advantage and was advancing. Jae-Yoon couldn't believe he was just an ordinary person. This was a monster. After all, Hobang had never even fought. The director said that in that case, he would take care of him, and they, along with Jae-Yoon, would train together. Of course, the athlete didn't like it, but he had no choice. Meanwhile, the event shifted to the school. Hobang lived his ordinary school life. The bell rang. With that, classes were over. Hobang looked at his notebook. Suddenly, he noticed something. Gay was standing there, seemingly waiting for him. Hobang was scared that something was wrong. They exchanged news. Gay asked how his boxing was going. Hobang was studying English words because an exam was coming up soon. Gay watched him intently. It was no wonder that she wanted to look at such people more often, as everyone else seemed gray to her. How did she not fall into depression at all? It must be so hard. But unfortunately, such gazes always ended with the object of contemplation noticing it. Hobang noticed it too. Gay quickly looked away. After which, she said that maybe she was proud of him, but it sounded rather sarcastic. Hobang decided that Gay had completely lost her mind, but it was beneficial for her. Suddenly, Hobang was called. It was Shidao. Gay told him to sit down. They would give Ho Bang a ride, but he wanted to warm up before training. Just a 15-minute walk. Strangely, she even seemed a bit upset. They said their goodbyes. Gay yelled that Ho Bang wasn't watching the road and could get hit by a car. She watched him for a while longer. Gay suddenly asked her sister what she thought. Shadal said she also noticed that Ho Bang was sweet, honest, and kind, but that wasn't the point. Gay wanted to inquire if there was anyone who could defeat Quan Il. Shardal stretched out a long well, after which she said that it was only Quan Il himself. Gay thought so too. After that, she wished Hobang to grow well. Meanwhile, the teenager was heading to training, not looking around, studying words. He was walking down a road where there were no people around. Suddenly, the sound of a motorcycle was heard. Hobang initially didn't react, but when the sound got closer, he turned around. However, he turned around too late. The motorcycle passed right by him, and the passenger hit him with a metal pipe. Hobang was so caught off guard that he flew back hard and hit his face on the asphalt. For a while, he lay there unconscious. The driver asked if his partner was sure there were no cameras here. Then they realized that Hobang could be dead. So the guys decided to flee quickly before anyone arrived, especially since the sight was not the most pleasant. Hobang lay there unconscious all alone. 
At first glance, it seemed that he was fine. In reality, he was unharmed. But in recent times, the boy clearly understood that it was better to pretend to be dead in such moments. Meanwhile, the events shifted to another building, and there filming was taking place. That idol was filming, and not alone. The director called for a break. Hyunsu received a notification on his phone. His brother wrote to him, saying he was worried about that boy. The young star couldn't hide his joy. Even his filming partner became curious, thinking he had a girlfriend. But Hyunsu replied that it was just a school friend. Then the partner wanted the idol's number. Hyunsu looked at her closely. It was a typical situation. That look and expression were a usual reaction to him. The partner even asked him to call her Unny. And it didn't matter who it was about. It was all about Hyunsu. He agreed to those terms. After all, any woman would be his if he wanted. Meanwhile, the events shifted back to the school. All the girls suddenly stopped and blushed. Their gazes were fixed on Hyunsu. The rest just looked like squids next to him. In Korea, anyone who wasn't good looking was literally called a squid. Such attention was just a typical situation for an idol. But when he lifted his eyes and saw them again, his gay, who didn't even look at him, they just walked past as if Hyunsu didn't exist. The idol was in shock. What the hell? Why was that jerk walking around as if nothing happened? The events shifted back a few days earlier. Hobang, as always, was heading to training after school, studying along the way. Suddenly, he heard shouts that seemed to be directed at him. In front of them was a group of bikers who didn't exude warm relationships. One of them stretched out that familiar bat and said that it was because of Hobang that they were all in trouble. They advised him not to move, then it would all end quickly. Otherwise, they would smash his head. And they threatened that Hobang would die if he wasn't lucky. The teenager just stood there in shock, silent. He couldn't think of anything better than to ask who they were. The masked boy ordered him to shut up and let them kill Hobang. This time he dodged. This only enraged the attacker more. But while he was talking, Hobang simply ran away. The gang gathered to chase after him. It looked like subway surfers from the outside, to be honest. Hobang showed fear and tried to figure out who these people were and what they wanted. The masked boy said he didn't need to know that. They were just going to break something of his. Real psychos. Two of the thugs rode on a motorcycle. Hobang understood what they were planning to do. It had happened before. So he skillfully dodged again. Suddenly, memories flooded back. And he recalled that situation when he was hit at the same spot. It was those same guys, yes. Hobang just remembered that now. And he asked the thugs if it was them from that time. Exactly, and if Hobang had gone to the hospital back then, they wouldn't have to chase him now. Suddenly, the teenager realized that this masked guy knew him. However, this only made him angrier. Bosh him. He swung the bat. Hobang blocked it and didn't even flinch. Suddenly, another danger. Hobang blocked again. As always, he wasn't in a hurry to counterattack. He just waited for the attackers to get tired of it or lose interest. They struck at various places, even in those where Hobang didn't block. But each time, they were surprised that this jerk didn't feel pain. At some point, it seemed they began to suspect something. But they continued to hit him anyway, as their number of chromosomes wasn't capable of analysis. At one moment, Hobang himself got tired of it. He stopped the bat with, with his own strike. This time, even those jerks felt the difference. Hobang spoke calmly and asked if it was dangerous. After all, if he got hit by something like that, then a broken limb wouldn't be the end of it. He could even die. During the conversation, those idiots didn't even notice Shudal's presence. She calmly greeted them. Shudal said that Hobang's movements were strange, so she came. And she didn't think they were just local thugs. Then who were they? The robbers, to be honest, were scared of the witness. Shudal ignored them. She said she had been watching for a bit and asked if Hobang wanted to be beaten again. He fell silent as if he was embarrassed. Shadal continued that Hobang had already had a sparring match and she and Gay knew he was good. So he didn't need to worry about that. She also added that there wasn't much difference between being good and being foolish. Shadal said that these guys weren't weaklings. So she ordered that idiot to fight. Suddenly a bat appeared in front of her face. The masked boy threatened her to step back if she didn't want to die. But Shudal didn't just not get scared. She simply ignored him and asked Hobang what he was doing. That idiot was putting on boxing gloves. To be honest, the thugs were a bit scared. Hobang said he didn't want to spar. So he was letting Jae-un win because he didn't want to fight since he didn't know how to do it. But he told Hobang something. 
From the moment he put on the gloves, it was no longer a fight but a sport. Shadal was a bit happy. Finally, something interesting was starting. Their gang leader ordered them to hit Hobang. The idiots immediately began to follow their boss's orders, who, to be honest, was scared to attack first. Hobang, as always, was calm and took his stance. Yes, since they attacked him first, he could block the strike. And it wasn't his problem that his strikes were several times stronger. While the partner was in shock, a kiss from Hobang's fist flew into his face. To be honest, the teenager didn't even exert effort, but his opponent flew straight into the wall, after which he fell to the ground. Their leader was already trembling with fear. Behind him awaited a surprise in the form of a taser. Hobang stood in shock. That jerk was screaming so much. Shadal commented that it was probably painful, but it wasn't worth bothering Hobang. She became curious about something, who these robbers actually were. Hobang was very scared. He feared Shidal and what she could do. The girl took out her phone. To be honest, the stupid Hobang still didn't understand anything. But it was obvious that these thugs weren't just from some neighborhood. The attack on Hobang was not just a coincidence. There had to be a reason. And all the answers were simply in this phone. Meanwhile, it had already grown dark. The events shifted to a small street called Suel, more precisely to the rooftop. There was Shadal, and she was tracking someone's geolocation. At the very bottom, she watched as a man beat up the gang that had attacked Hobang. Well, was supposed to attack. As you might have guessed, they were hired to take care of the teenager. Hyunsu was also standing nearby. He said enough, as it was disgusting to watch, especially since they were not at fault. The guy was in shock. He even asked for clarification. Suddenly, a sneaker flew into his face. Hyunsu hit the man. He justified it by saying it was his fault. So he deserved punishment. Makes sense, right? Shadal heard all these words and conversations perfectly through her earpiece. After a few punches to the face, the man said he understood everything. After that, Hyunsu gave them a week to choose. Either they break Hobang or he breaks them. A choice without a choice. All in Hyunsu's style. Intimidation, manipulation, power. But how long would it last? Now it was time to scold the gang. Their boss said he wasn't afraid of Hyunsu, but of the one standing behind him. The gang asked who that was, but the boss had enough sense not to reveal it. Shadi understood that she wouldn't hear anything interesting from here on. Meanwhile, a new day had arrived. Shudal told Gay everything about her classmate Hyun Su and the attack on Ho Bang. But the younger sister didn't even know who he was. How could that be possible? They were celebrities who attended the same school and had even talked together 21 days ago. Yet Gay truly didn't remember. Shudal forgot that these worthless people had ordinary memories. She told her about Park Hyun Su, the youngest member of the idol group ATM. The most popular group of their time in Hyun Su, oh, when Ma Sha Hong was such a star there that he was not even compared to the other members. A diamond with a stunning face and an equally stunning voice and body, he entered school with an honest, charming face and excellent grades. Was he a fraud? They said he was the director's nephew, which is why he was promoted more heavily. Gay just listened while Shea Dao fumed over her worthless memory. However, the younger sister now understood even less why such talent would treat Ho Bang that way. But that wasn't the issue. The illusion of pride in Park Hyun Su was, in fact, his madness. The events shifted to a house. Someone rang the doorbell and the door opened. A very exhausted girl peeked out and asked in a frightened voice who it was. There stood Shi Dao, asking if this was Kim Yona. A week ago, she had met with Hyun Su, so claimed the older sister. After that, Kim Yona abruptly shut the door. But Shi Dao was ready for this. She blocked the door with her foot. This, of course, scared her. But Shi Dao had something up her sleeve. She told Yona that she knew something and could help. After all, she knew about her meeting with Hyun Su a week ago and what happened that day. The news reported that the famous actress Yona was leaving the screen due to health issues. How could this even happen? Then the door opened again. There stood Kim Yona, all in tears, asking if they would really help her. Meanwhile, the events shifted back a week. There, Hyun Su and Kim Yona indeed met at night. When the girl asked where they had been, the idol simply said they stood out too much. So it was better not to be outside, as there was no one inside at all. Yonan decided he was trying to intrigue her, but how wrong she was. However, Hyunsu also made a huge mistake that day. Such a mistake could cost him his career. They went to karaoke. Yona said she was very touched that Hyunsu rented the whole place just to be with her. And at that moment, the door opened and someone walked in. Yona got scared. She felt some danger even then. A simple guy walked in, yawned, and apologized for being late. 
Yona began to fume and shout that this idiot had entered the wrong room. But Hyunsu said he had been waiting for a friend. The guy recognized Kim Yona. He said she was much cuter in real life than on TV. And very appetizing, too, Hyunsu suddenly asked. Did Yona really think he would go on a date with her? After all, she was gray and boring. Did she think they were on the same level? But since she was there, she should enjoy herself. Hyunsu said it would be good for her, too. After that, Yona finally decided it was time to run. But she didn't make it. They blocked her way. She looked into his eyes, which somehow were so alluring. That jerk asked if Yona wanted to look at him, but she remained silent. However, her eyes, they suddenly began to close, feeling so heavy. He asked if Yone was feeling good, and she said she felt very good. After that, he started to undress and asked if Yona would like to make it even better. Yona said she was hypnotized and couldn't resist, and she didn't understand why he did that. The video film then was sold only to VIP clients for a very high price. But now similar information had been confirmed about other celebrities. The ability, this guy, he used a superpower. Gay knew for sure and couldn't be mistaken. The younger sister was so furious and she swore she would do something to that jerk. Shadal didn't understand one thing. What did he need all this for? He had everything he wanted. She didn't think Hyunsu was normal, as a normal person wouldn't like gay. In any case, if this idol invited Gay, then it was their chance. They could get into their hideout. And there they would find him, that guy in the mask. Gay thought for just a second, then immediately agreed. She ordered Hobang to free up time for tomorrow. They would take advantage of it. That's why they came together. Hyun Soo was in shock and a bit nervous. Just like on a first date, it seemed Gay really liked him. Hobang greeted him. And so they gathered. The guy who was attacked, his hostess, and the instigator of the attack. Is this really normal? The answer is obvious. No. Hyunsu didn't know what Gay liked, but he heard the food here was good. He acted like a little puppy, even stuttering. Gay said she preferred Titiok Balki, and Hobang supported the idol, saying he liked everything. After which, he took a big bite of meat. That's Hobang for you. Nothing would change him. Gay offered him her portion, of course, and this idiot didn't refuse. Hyunsu felt like a complete fool. But the way these two interacted, jealousy was killing him. Hyun Soo said he would step out for a bit. Meanwhile, someone was playing on the computer, completely naked. That ugly haircut. By the way, he was still playing here, not what you might think. Yes, it was him, that superhuman who assaulted girls. By the way, he was still playing here, not what you might think. At that moment, Hyun Soo called him. Although his brother thought he was on a date, but what the hell kind of date was this? Yet Hyunsu himself said he met the one, and now he was whining, although that was in his style. When the idol told everything, his brother couldn't hold back and laughed until he cried. The best man in the world, Park Hyunsu, became the third wheel? What a loser he was. Even his brother mocked this idol. In any case, Hyunsu was so disappointed that he didn't want to endure it anymore and asked his brother for help. But he didn't really want to, as it was technically his day off. However, he still agreed. Hyunsu asked his brother to take those guys too, as Hobang was still walking around without a single fracture. Suddenly, Gay's phone rang. She received some message and read it without a single emotion. Then she asked Hobang to beat someone up. The guy nearly spat out his food at such a request. Hobang couldn't understand why he had to beat someone up just like that. After all, Gay promised he would only deal with superhumans, yet she asked to just get straight to the task. She asked if Hobang could protect her. And of course, he couldn't refuse her, not just because she was paying him. At that moment, Hyunsu returned, saying he had received a call and suggested going to karaoke if they were done eating. He knew a good place where it was quiet and no one would bother them. Gay was dissatisfied. She remembered what that jerk did to Yonayu. Suddenly, Hobang said, of course. What kind of questions were these? Of course, he could protect Gay. Hyunsu's face showed surprise and a smile appeared on Gay's face and she agreed to go to that karaoke. The area where it was located had been closed off because many people had gone missing here, and there weren't many passers-by on the streets. That's why Hyun Soo could feel at home in this place. The idol entered first. Gay decided to ask Hobang once more, if he was sure, but the teenager had never been so sure in his life. So they went in. Gay looked around carefully while Hyun Soo said that not many customers came to karaoke. However, in the booth, she saw a sufficient number of guys. Hyunsu said he didn't expect so many customers this time. There were two more people standing in the hallway. 
Gay played along, saying it was indeed a bit strange. hyun Su asked if they would be having drinks and asked Ho-Bang to get some. He refused, but Gay insisted. She whispered that she hadn't seen the one in the mask yet, so she asked him to act as natural as possible. Ho-Bang complied. He went to the vending machine that was in the hallway. Ho-Bang might have wanted to act naturally, but when something like this was happening, it was very hard. Meanwhile, hyun Su wasted no time and asked what kind of relationship they had with Ho-Bang since they were always together at school. He said he just didn't understand since she and Ho-Bang were on such different levels. Didn't she know all the scholarship students came from poor families? They would never compare to someone like hyun Su. Even just watching how they ate, if Gay was with him out of pity, the idol thought it wasn't worth getting too close. But she didn't understand why hyun Su was speaking for both of them. After all, if that was the case, it applied to him too. He wasn't on that level to be around Gay. They weren't cows or pigs, so why was hyun Su ranking everyone? At that moment, someone entered the room. He greeted everyone, walking in boldly as if it were his own home. Gay immediately understood everything. Finally, the jerk with the bowl haircut had arrived. Gay had seen him, the person in the mask from the video. hyun Su introduced him as his close friend and the owner of the karaoke place. Gay hadn't expected him to arrive so quickly. He immediately sat down next to her as close as possible. And he said again that Gay was much cuter in real life. It seemed those were all the compliments his tiny brain could remember. To be honest, Gay started to panic a little, but she calmed herself with the thought that Ho-Bang would come soon and they would handle everything. Suddenly she felt something strange. What was that? Her body? It suddenly felt so weak. Was he using his power on her? That jerk broke into a smile and asked what was wrong. He was just mocking her, asking if she felt sick or if she was ill. Gay didn't think he would act so thoughtlessly. That jerk put his hand on her shoulder, said she looked tired, and suggested they go to his place to relax. A strange feeling. Gay felt better. It was as if she was coming out of a drunken stupor. He said she had very nice lips and asked if he could kiss her. Gay felt as if she were under hypnosis. She closed her eyes but didn't respond. Suddenly she remembered the look of that jerk, the one who killed her mother right before her eyes. At that moment, Gay snapped back to reality. Meanwhile, a bunch of idiots didn't understand why they were all called in just to get rid of one Ho-Bang. But those who had already fought him said that this guy was actually not as simple as he seemed. Still, they wanted to finish him off quickly since he was just a beggar. Such expressions and stereotypes only worked in Ho-Bang's favor. Meanwhile, the scene shifted to the sports club. Han Jae and the director stood in shock. The punching bag was completely torn apart and it had even come down from the ceiling. Han Jae didn't even know what to say. Then Ho-Bang asked to hit the bag with his bare hands. He wanted to try hitting without gloves. Han Jae was scared as it sounded like Ho-Bang was just warming up. But it didn't matter how hard you hit. If you did it wrong, you could get injured. So he advised wrapping his hands in bandages. And he asked him not to hurt himself due to inexperience. Ho-Bang explained that he just wanted to learn how to control the force of his punches. So all of this was done by that rookie, and he was still controlling his strength. The events returned to reality, where, as you understood, it was not Ho-Bang who was in danger, but all those decent people. He said he was very busy right now, so if they wanted something, he asked them to hurry up. Some decided that Ho-Bang was clearly slow-witted, but the teenager just went back to the room if they didn't want anything. That confidence left them in a daze. But for some, it drove them mad. Hobang always waited and never attacked first. Everyone watched to see what would happen next as the teenager took a very strong hit to the head. Yet he simply got up, not even moving from his spot. Then he turned and asked if this would now be considered self-defense. In the eyes of others, Hobang was just insane. And in some ways they were right. People were used to calling those who were different psychos. But didn't they create the norm based on deviations? While all the other bullies stood in shock, their brother lay unconscious and possibly needed medical help. A few seconds of silence. After which, those idiots jumped into a fight. One grabbed Hobang. Please, don't bring them up in the comments. I know it's cute. The ginger thug started celebrating that he had caught him. But the joy stopped when he got hit in the face. Hobang could fight, even with some ginger monkey hanging from his neck. Even though they were hitting him. Yet the teenager always responded with even stronger hits. It didn't even hurt him. Then the next ones approached. They tried to hit. Ho-Bang didn't defend himself as if he was letting them enjoy it before he would smash their heads in. Or maybe 
The teenager was enjoying himself, those shocked expressions on their faces. It's hard to believe he didn't like it. Meanwhile, the jerk had a mark from a slap on his face. Hyunsu didn't understand what was happening. Mommy's boy was about to wet his pants. He didn't understand how. How could she refuse him? He did everything as he always did. Meanwhile, Hobang's opponents were not doing any better. Those who were smarter, smarter realized their chances were slim. Hobang was even a bit tired. He didn't like what he was doing. He raised his eyes and asked, was that enough? It sounded like a suggestion since everyone already knew who had won and Hobang didn't like hitting people. Or maybe they wanted more. Hobang said it was better to stop there. In fact, there was a threat in his words. His opponent was already trembling, barely holding the bat. But the ginger monkey shouted for him to hit Hobang and to do it quickly. This suddenly gave the poor guy strength. And he decided to obey his partner's command, choosing the easiest strategy, where he wouldn't even get scratched. Well, Hobang had no choice but to fight. Meanwhile, in the room, they were trying to figure out how Gay managed it. She was very angry and showed it with her whole demeanor. Hyunsu ordered his brother to stop with the jokes and finally do it. But he wasn't joking, as his power didn't work on Gay. Hyunsu began to panic, so he switched to shouting. He was interrupted by Gay, who said she knew all the tricks of that idiot. She asked if Hyunsu wanted to film a movie with her, and if he even understood who he was dealing with. Although Mommy's little bunny was scared by this, he didn't show it. After all, if Gay assured that she knew everything, then she became a problem. And what would she do now, run away and start screaming? He just wanted to keep the video for himself. But now he had no other choice. Hyunsu began to openly mock and intimidate, saying that Hobang wouldn't help her because he was already dead. And to be honest, Gay was a little scared, but still held on to hope. She believed in Hobang. The brother asked what Hyunsu was planning to do. Did he really want his brother to deal with her company? The idol admitted that from the very beginning, they planned to handle Gay. The brother said he had a bad feeling about this. He didn't think it was worth going this far, but Hyunsu calmed him down, saying it was Gay's fault. If she were just a regular chick, there wouldn't be any problems. But she was a Che Bol, so if she got out of here, it would be a complete failure for them. The brother was angry that Hyunsu brought someone they couldn't handle. He had to make some calls, and it was always so scary. Gay asked what company they were talking about, and what did their dealing mean? The guy silently looked at Gay, after which the brother ordered Hyun Su to take her phone while she was calling. The idol asked Gay to behave herself because he hated hitting women. Her look annoyed him. She wasn't scared. But how long would that last? Gay only said she didn't understand anything. Hyun Su had money and popularity, so what did he need all this for? And no matter how much she thought, she didn't understand why. The brother called another guy, saying there were business problems, specifically with the goods. A smile appeared on Hyun Su's face. Gay suddenly realized that the idol was just insane. Did she really think that this jerk got this far just by having money and talent? Gay would probably be surprised to know who was in her contacts and phone. Police, doctors, judges, they were all in his hands. That was his real power. Even the radio station director couldn't treat him without proper respect. And that's why now Gay also had to treat him with the appropriate respect. He wasn't someone she could handle. Suddenly, an undisguised shock appeared on her face. Did he really do all this for such a reason? Gay decided it was time to put him in his place. Hyun Soo just laughed awkwardly and exaggeratedly. But even the brother didn't support him and asked him to behave quietly. The idol said that soon Gay would pay for her words even if she begged for mercy. Suddenly, Hyun Soo fell silent abruptly. After that, his stupid expression turned less self-satisfied because at the door, he saw Ho Bang. The teenager started tugging at the handle to get inside. Even the brother stood up. He hadn't expected this. Well, if the door was closed, Ho Bang had no choice but to kick the door down with a light kick. It was nice to see that surprised, dumb face. Ho Bang was very calm and asked Gay what he should do now. She screamed that he should kill all these idiots. Kill in what sense? Well, no, that was too much. But while he was thinking, Hyun Soo had already jumped into the fight. He leaped over him, wanting to swing. He was puzzled that Ho Bang was completely calm. So he managed to hit, although the idol dodged. And even hit back. And then again, this time right in the face, the blow was strong. But his shock knew no bounds. After all, Ho Bang didn't just look unscathed. He was skillfully fighting back. Gay managed to escape closer to the exit, hiding behind Ho Bang. The brother couldn't understand what his guys were up to. 
If that scumbag was completely unharmed right now, Hyunsu asked if his brother had called and how long they should wait. About an hour. Hyunsu looked at his fist, which was already throbbing. He told his brother he would pay double if he said to come right now.